Good morning, guys. Welcome to another episode of Xa Talk Show. I am your host Xa Li, and、uh, we are going to talk about interesting things. Okay, and first of all, let's put on the date. So here is my Emacs, and I'm gonna talk about、uh, Xa Talk Show date. April first. Oh, today is April Fools. What an idiotic thing. Okay, I'm going to show you. Actually, I'm going to show you my food. You know, I just went. I'm like two minutes, three minutes late. I just went to a shop with my roommate. And let me let me say start now. Start now. Copy, paste, and go to Mastodon. Mastodon. Well, Mastodon is the most idiotic name, you know, of the open source geeks. You know, first of all, if you want to be popular, don't use such stupid name. Okay, you know, like you cannot spell it. It's like it's like you know.、Um, okay, let me post this first. Start now. And let's see how many people are watching. One people watching, yeah. And let me start、uh, YouTube, not YouTube, but uh, uh, Safari. But because I'm going to log on to my、uh, Twitter account to announce I'm alive, you see. So、uh, let me show you.、Uh, let me give you a view to a kill. <laughs> Now this is my abode. Okay, you can see those are my uh, that's my um, uh, uh, my bed quarters, and、uh, that's all mess. Okay, that's mess, mess. Ten years worth of mess. You know, recently I read on Twitter someone wrote about ADHD. You know that uh, you know like A A H D D or what whatever that syndrome. And okay, look. Now this is a pack rat situation. This is a, you know, you are looking at someone who's got serious problems, <laughs> serious problems in life. <laughs> okay, so let me show you. So I went to、uh, with my roommate, and you can see I got food. These are my rations. You know, got bananas, got three. Ah.、Um, Three, uh, 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 cartons of you know, juice. Now this is apple juice. Oh, this is my life blood. This is like, you know, the, the 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 energy drink, the power drink. For sustenance, so I got a bunch of things for sustenance. You see, and.、Uh, And there is the grape juice. Grape juice you cannot do without grape juice. Okay. And by the way, I don't drink any sugar to drink. So all my food, I never drink sugar. You know, like Coke you know, and stuff. And you don't want to drink when when you buy juice. Always buy that that says hundred percent juice. You know, no, no that you know what they they call it the、uh, the kind of sugar they use. So first of all, let me. Put on some, and I got this hat today, and some some like Salvation Army kind of <laughs> store with my roommate. So they went and then I went. It's like you know two dollars, three dollars cheap. So I just got it. You know why? Because once you get. <laughs> But there's a problem. I noticed in past year that your head is cold. Hey, Green Deck from Russia. Echo again. Ah,、oh, shit. You know this problem. You know OBS. Um. Okay, now it's better. Yeah, the OBS. I should.、Uh... Oops. 
Now that's energy drink, okay? This is the lifeblood of things. Actually, I still have some here. Let's put it here. How are, how is going, Green Deck? Hey, Powo Bokuts. Sounds awful. Sounds better now? So today, we're going to talk about a bunch of things. You know, I noticed, so there's one more item I want to show you. Uh, now look. You see that? That's pizza. That's pizza. You see? <laughs> Great pizza. Three, uh, three dollars each. And you just put them in oven for like 20 minutes and it's good. Wonderful pizza. Cheap pizza. So how is in Russia? I mean, is Russia in that city uh, jitters something something bug? Is that expensive or uh, 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 you know comparatively in Russia is it expensive to live in Russia so now you have seen my rations for my sustenance and now it's time to put money in my bank account Ksali <laughs> keypads dot index. Okay, all these are good things. You know, you you go buy them. Okay, buy them. Then you go here. Then you go to my blog. Actually, just go to Ksali dot info. And of course, you got my PayPal. You got my Patreon. You got my Amazon, and put money there. Okay, because that's good. It's good for me. It's good for you. It's good for humanity, you know. <laughs> um, okay, what's the next topic will be show food. I've already showed you my food. Uh, pay me, yes, I said that. And talk show, focus on one topic and possibly twice a day. Yeah, so I was thinking, you know, so I'm doing video and I've been doing for like three months now, every day almost. And uh, you know you learn you you learn you learn many experiences. You you learn how to do live stream. You learn how to you, you learn you learn your oration skills. You know. Now, if you are younger, you know millennials, you probably are ignorant. You know you don't know what the <laughs> what is oration. You know the the oration is the art of talking. Okay, so uh, you got. You know, oration there are many aspects. You want to improve your uh, articulation. Now, articulation does just does not just mean uh, the you know clear pronunciation, but also the ability to or the um, how you you know if you have complex ideas, you want to be able to like um, express them. You know, speak them clearly, but also uh, you you want to be able to capture the idea. Use you know a few you know, you know, few words with clarity. That is, that is what articulation is about. And then you want, uh, yeah, articulation. So you learn a lot, a lot of things about doing video. About you know, for example, what topics you go. You know, whether you, um, how do you deal? Like you know, when you start to do things, you know, you learn things. For example, many open source fans, you know, they, in their life, they've n never opened a business. <laughs> you know, but they have all sort of opinions about how how the society should be, how internet should be. You know, that's a typical open source. Uh, and how economy, you know, how to make money and so on. Uh, but anyway, so, so yeah, so I, you know, I've been talking a lot and uh, I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do more focused, you know, possibly we don't I don't know for sure but you know I tend to like you know uh, do as you go go as you do you know instead of like a master plan because whenever I do master plan usually it fails because when I have a master plan because I'm very ambitious you know I'm very 
um, highly, extremely competitive. And the reason of that is it's rather from a uh, 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 from my childhood, from the way I was grew up, you know. In other words, you could say, you know, my parents, I never got, you know, uh, love or, you know, confidence from my parents, you know, which is in, in sharp contrast uh, to America. You know, in America, education, you know, typically the parents are like always encourage your children, you know, oh, can you please, you know, do this? Oh, oh, you are beautiful. Oh, this, that is great. Oh, that's great ach achievement. That's typical American education. That's supposed to be the ideal, you know, all the parents do that. You know, they talk to your, to your kids a as if like talking to, you know, uh, close friends, you know, stranger friends, you know, you like, <laughs> you know, please and do that. But on, on the other hand, you know, in China, you know, in, in the, in Taiwan, uh, in Chinese, we you don't talk to your kids with all the please and 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 you know that, those polite words. You know, you don't almost never. You know, I, you know. Oh, they they've got uh, my roommates are cooking and <laughs> the alarm went off. I guess they too much smoke. So in China, you know, the culture is different, of course. And you don't, you know, you, you, it's kind of strange to see, you know, parents talking to the kids with, you know, please and, you know, that, that kind of almost, almost like negotiation in, in a business meeting, you know. <laughs> you just tell your kids what to do. I mean, not like, you, you know, it, you know, you just, they are your children. You teach them. You tell them, no, don't do this or, or you know, do that. Oh, that's great. You know, or you, you, of course, you, uh, you know you know with encouragement sometimes and stuff but anyway the point is it's very different from the american uh way okay but the also also the other uh important actually this is the most critical thing first of all every culture is different okay that's obvious you know obvious you know you have you know different culture have different ways of to uh bring up their uh children but the thing about american is that now this is similar to the open source scan, you know, the, the, the elite hacker types, okay. The thing about American culture, uh, about American is that they, they do it that their way, but more importantly, they think it is the only way. I mean, for the whole world, like if you don't do this way, you are wrong, you are like, uh, you are uh, unethical, you are criminal, you know. It's like you you look at the Americans uh, controversial or sensitive sensitivity, you know, the topics, political sensitive topics, for example, democracy and others I'd rather I'd rather not mention, but you take those topics, okay, then you look at other words, they are entirely different, man, you know, it's, it's, you know, you look at Japan, uh, Russia, you look at, you know, uh, China, you know, non, non Western, non, non white Western people, okay, you look at different countries <laughs> they are entirely different you know from your you know your like very narrow prescribed you know certain views about any you know hot political buttons in USA yeah that's that's my rant about USA hi Nicholas now Nicholas is from Hong Kong hi hi there hi to Hong Kong Shanga. Uh, and okay, uh, well, Moscow is expensive, but in the rest of country, many people in Russia live for less than three hundred dollars a month. Wow, in Yekaterinburg, it's like fifty fifty. I see. Uh, Green Deck says you can create a different scene for a full scene, full screen camera, and uh, switch it live uh, with OBS. Yeah, I, I guess I can. I just never explored it. Like, you know, just click here and it will switch to, you know, a different, uh, either full screen of myself or something, right? Yeah, I, I need to explore um, uh, OBS, you know, <laughs> starting with reading the manuals, but I haven't done so yet. Oh, by the way, uh, since we are talking about culture, I think we are going to have a guest. A guest, his name is Israel. And uh, uh, I think we're gonna have it tomorrow, and he's gonna just join me, uh, and we're gonna talk about 
uh, cultural, like he's gonna introduce us culture in, uh, you know, uh, uh, coach, coach, culture around maybe Middle East. I'm not too sure, but he's gonna talk about that. So tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, right now we are working out on how to actually do it, you know, on the technical aspect, because, you know, this is my, I don't know about live streaming much, so, you know, so far I've just used to this, you know, I go to YouTube, I click, you know, live stream, then I go to OBS, I click on start streaming, and there we have it, streaming live. And, but now we, he, he, he is going to join me, so, audio, uh, in audio, so he suggested some software I have to like install and look into create account maybe. Then, you know, he's going to talk, we're going to talk and, and, you know, also meanwhile stream it. So that's tomorrow. I think it, it's to, tomorrow, uh, 11, 30, 11 o'clock or 11.30 a.m. in the morning, San Francisco time. Actually, I need to check the time to make sure. Um, but anyway, um, I think um, you know, you know, uh, I, you know. I, I'll announce it on my Twitter and uh, Mastodon, and let, let's see how it goes. So, by the way, he is he is also an Emacs user, and he is um, he is you know he has done some Emacs videos. Um, I don't remember the name right now. The Emacs. Um, lessons but i don't want to search it now but anyway so you, you 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 know if you have seen my videos he has been here a few times you probably know but he'll be here tomorrow we'll um see okay audio yeah someone asked me for a audio only version do you guys like do you guys want a audio only version uh because uh uh, yeah, someone named Will, William, asked me for it. So, yeah, he does Emacs is great, yeah. Okay, this Israel guy, uh, he has a video, a YouTube channel called Emacs is great. So you you guys might check it out. So, yeah, good, thank you. Thank you, Green Deck. So let's go to YouTube. YouTube. YouTube, the modern TV. YouTube is the TV of the millennials. <laughs> yeah, well, at least it's becoming so because every video they have when when you start to watch a video they have a logo. Ooh, you know, you know, just idiot, idiocy. It's like like everything is commercialized, of course. You know, then you know. Well, anyway, so Emacs is great. So this guy Israel Dove. Or, or Israel Dove. Oh, wait, oops. Uh, okay, so he's got, you know, he's producing videos like frequently. Uh, uh, okay, let's go to his channel. Oh, okay, and you can see Hebrew. Uh, that would be interesting. So tomorrow I'm going to do it. Oops, I don't want to click. Hold on. Tomorrow I'm going to do a Herb. Um, shit. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to do a Hebrew page for my Unicode page. So we're gonna discuss maybe there's interesting things about Hebrew. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's him, and let's go back to the next topic. By the way, as usual, if you guys have any comments, any thoughts, any opinions, type it. Keep the comments going, because that keeps the channel. That keeps the uh, the video interesting. Okay, so next, I think I'm going to do this Amazon page. Actually, I mentioned this before. Uh, how long I've been going? So I've been talking for 19 minutes. Uh, okay, so the next one is gonna be Emacs and keyboard, or. Oh. So we can do a Emacs and keyboard, which is adding a keyboard to my uh, keyboard blog, or I can demonstrate a Emacs XR HTML lines to list, or we can do a uh, 
uh, this page. Now this page is a web crawler in Python and it's in Python 2. I'm go I need to convert it to Python 3. So we can do that. So what do you guys think? Which one do you like to see? So one of them is, okay, let me show you this one. Uh, so three choices. I give you multiple choices. Three choices. One is this. This is a key. This is a great programmable keyboard. I'm going to add this page as one of my keyboard review page on this keyboard. So you're gonna see how I use Emacs. You know, it's kind of like an Emacs demo. And maybe a little bit. I'll talk about a little bit keyboard if you like. You know, ask me questions. Uh, so that, or I can do another page. Um, we can do uh, another thing like, uh, uh, oops, uh, like like this. Okay, something, something else. Okay, uh, let me start. Xar start command log mod. Okay, now you can see all my Emacs commands on the left panel. Okay, now look, watch. I do. I call this command, and look at these two lines. Okay, now watch. Wait, I magnify. Okay, look, watch. Ding, and it's done. You see something and something else. Now view in browser. You see it's these two items. Um, let's add a um, HR showing browser. You can see. You see. So I just press, basically, I press, uh, let's see, I press, um, I press two keys and it becomes a list. So the command is called line to list. So I can demo, you know, do a demo. I mean, I'm going to show you uh, some Emacs list code, code, you know, how I do that and maybe possibly teach you some Emacs list. So that's the other thing. And another thing is just a convert Python 2 to 3. So which one you like? The Emacs demo for keyboard. Okay, Green Deck got it. Okay, so <laughs> so let's do the Emacs keyboard. Everything is interesting. Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna try to do this quick. You know, instead of like, you know, like I, sometimes I watch my old videos. I kind of like dragging on. You know, talking too much and repetitors. So I I I'm getting better not to uh, be like that. So uh, let's go to my keyboard block. This is my keyboard block, and you can see uh, my keyboard block. So for, so I'm going to, um, you know, I just copy the URL and I put a link here and press a button. Uh, and uh, it's um, wait, 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 wait. Let me do it again. Okay. So you see that empty, paste, linkify. That's it. Okay, so now show in browser. Now, of course, that's that's just a buy am at buy at Amazon. That's not good enough. So I need to click on that. Uh, click on that, and I'm gonna right click, save image as. Okay, I'm gonna save it as TT. Okay, save. Okay, it's saved to my download folder. Okay, close it. Uh, actually, let's see uh, anything else interesting. You can connect the, you can connect the keypad, plug and play, and the 104 key keyboard with the same computer at the same time. They will not interfere. Okay, that's that. Oh, that's the programmable the the programmability. That's pretty good. I think they improved their software because it's different from what I've seen last time. Yeah, so I would recommend this keyboard actually. Uh, because I have a version, um, it's kind of sitting there uh, in, 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 and it's dirty. Um, you know, one thing I want about programmable, okay, one thing, let's talk about a programmable keyboard a little bit. Now, when you buy a keyboard, you want it to be programmable, okay, and you want it to, um, Okay, let's do the web crawler uh, uh, after this. So you want to buy a keyboard that's programmable, okay? Uh, meaning that with memory, with memory on the keyboard, so that you can plug it into any computer, any operating system. Then your uh, pre-programmed keys is there. Uh, 
uh, let's go to Kasali info dot info okay and um, let's go to keyboard uh, yeah so I have some I you know uh, PC keyboard keypads okay click on keypads and you can see the keypads I recommend and there are uh, lots of info about how to buy a keypad you know go ahead and read that if you like now yeah so first of all you want a programmable keyboard with memory on it then the other question is how um, what are the ways you know how do you program the keyboard now depending on a keyboard there are many different uh, ways for example one of the ways for example ErgoDox now to program ErgoDox keyboard you need to go to a website then you see okay let me show you an article then um, design okay click on design and there are several articles firmware okay this page about about the different ways uh, to program a keyboard now first of all there are different firmware capabilities now, now all pro programmable keyboard you know maybe a keypad or a keyboard they have you know they all say programmable they all say they are programmable keyboard but actually the capability you know just exactly what kind of key you can program actually differ quite a lot among uh, among different programmable keyboards you know from Logitech from or Ergodox which runs the Q QMX uh, open source software or from keyboard IO or from Kinesis Kinesis which is oh, the one uh, yeah Oh, just a, uh, this, this bag. This bag. So, um, so, so different. So there are different programmable keyboards. Um, that uh, yeah. Let me show you my connections. So you see, that's my. Um, let's see if I. You know, I've showed this many times, but you know, for those of you new. You know to my desktop so it looks like that so Kinesis is also program programmable but the point is different programmable keyboards the programmability what kind of uh, key you can program is actually quite different so I give you some examples of the differences then oh, the, okay that's one thing then how you program the keyboard is actually also quite different now um, okay f first of all I talk about the advantage of firmware you know programmable keyboard over operating system key mapping you know you can you know there are many software on, on Mac on Linux you know uh, on Windows auto hotkey on the Mac is uh, Carabiner uh, on, on Linux you have um, you know uh, um, you know um, for example you, if you go here um, you can see Linux so this panel is all about uh, how do you program key program keyboards using your operating system but those are no good compared to the programmable keyboard firmware okay that's why you want to buy a keyboard that's programmable not you know if you don't have a programmable keyboard you want to program keys you can use the operating system you know but it's usually uh, you spend hours you know on a Mac or Windows you know different software or Linux is worse worst you spend hours you know to to try to get the right syntax you know to see if it works and even if you know and it does not work hundred percent like sometimes some programs is in, in root privilege for example on Windows then the key doesn't work or when the system boots up you are in terminal you know um, virtual terminal the key you are programmable the key you program doesn't work so programming on the OS you know via OS software is second second rate okay you do you 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 don't want to do that if you can you want a programmable keyboard first uh, so that's why you know I recommend so that that's what I'm talking about advantage of firmware over operating system key mapping okay now the the issue I'm going to uh, touch is um, um, anyway there are different methods to program the keys for example if you buy ergo, ergo docs you you want to program the keys what do you do you go to the website you go to the you know one of the ergo docs website you you know you drag keys around uh, I have a window yeah here it is you know here's a ergo docs 
this one is from uh, infinity ergodox infinity you know so you go to the website you drag the keys around you know to, you know to program the keys then you click save it will actually save a binary you know to, to your system then you have to download uh, I think you have to download a firmware updater then on your operating system you click you launch the firmware updater you then you click update then you select the binary file you just downloaded you just created then you say go then then it's uh, updated you know so it's it's not good you know because I have one keyboard that's like that or oh, the truly ergonomic keyboard is like that uh, I have it here truly ergonomic some somewhere you can find in the ergonomic well let's just go there ergonomic keyboards uh, ergonomic keyboard history then truly this one you know I have this one I still do uh, so this one back then the you know to update the firmware it's like it's like the ergo docs it's not convenient because you have to go to the website and do things then download you know a binary then launch the updater firmware updater you know then you know choose the you know it's no good the the best way um, a feature for programmable keyboard is it's so called driverless okay it's called driverless or on the fly programmability uh, for example my kinesis is like that so if I want to program the keys uh, for example if I want to program the keys I just press uh, here I just hold down this button depending on if I want to uh, just map one key or if I want to do a macro if I want to program a macro I press that and uh, you know and, and press that then I just press keys then when I'm done I press that again then then it's set in in the firmware you know so you know so 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 that's about you know programmability um, you know you can check out my website the URL there and now let's go back to that Amazon model okay uh, four layers customer configuration so uh, this this keyboard as far as I know it does not have driverless programming so if when you want to press uh, when you want to program this keyboard you have to launch their softwares usually called driver software you know you launch the software then you you know click around then say save then it's saved in the keyboard memory so it's not you know it's the it's not the best okay but but it's 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 uh, reasonably good so let's go back to my um, my blog now remember I need to write a page about these right now remember I just saved a picture before now I can call this command look at the left panel okay that's XAR move image file let's say I choose a directory okay and uh, that's my file name and this is called what's the name what should I name it Coolatron one-handed macro okay uh, so I'm gonna name it K O O L E uh, K O O L E R T R and uh, keypad okay let's say RGB keypad okay so now look at the look at my blog Whoa! look isn't that beautiful the RGB is so wonderful colorful colorful and uh, logical <laughs> okay then put the Amazon link here and uh, let's uh, make it good there it is basically that's um, that's how I do it that, that that's the that's the essential you know uh, uh, but usually you know if I'm you know um, what usually I have to do is I go to my keypad page and I have to actually put it here so you know let's do that so copy the copy the oops yeah. copy the URL switch back to Emacs paste the URL here make a link make a paragraph cut this block go back to the link location 
open it uh, and go page down depends on where do I want to put it um, it's like okay I, I'm probably gonna put above this okay let's search for smart yell okay put a cursor there paste it cut this undo move one block up paste it and change it to K O L L E R T R O and okay and view in browser page down page down you see that's good that that's good now I need to update the date now this page is last updated on 2018 10 12 20, uh, October 29th now look at my left panel look one two three three keys and uh, it's it calls uh, XAR site update article timestamp. Now look in browser. 2019, April 1st. Good. And this is, this is not April 1st joke. So that is it for this topic. Oh, one more thing. One more thing is like, uh, just go to eShow. Okay, let me show this. Go to eShow. Call XAR Interactive a brief then it give me a bunch of choices. Each one of them is a, a brief. So I just pick the first one, async. Now it expands to that. Enter. Then, you know, I noticed if you, um, if I say the word, I, if I say this word, if I say this word, Google will actually, um, stop streaming for like two seconds or so I noticed that uh, you know let me try that again I mean uh, let, you know let, let me let's try that so if to see if um, Google actually take that few seconds away for example I'm going to say these words okay I'm going to say okay I'm going to say this phrase and you guys tell me if you gonna you can hear it or you know if you know or it 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 or it, there's uh, some cut of two seconds okay i'm going to type my password okay so okay close that uh so did you guys actually hear i mean here did did google cut out a few seconds or something Hey George. Uh, hey Daniel. George. Uh, George, where are you from, George? I forgot. Oh, you are from Australia. Zhong, jiang, jiang zhong wen. Ni si lao wai. Ni si lao wai hai si lao lao zhong. So that's, uh, that's about keyboard. Let's, um, so is there any questions about keyboard? Let me know. Okay, so let's see how many people, six watching. And uh, let's go to the next topic then. Uh, save that. Let's go to the next topic. Let's do, okay, let's do the Python one then. Guys, are you here? Uh, type something, guys. Let's see. Hello, hello. Okay, let's, shall we do the next one to the Python then? Converting Python to a web crawler. Oh my God, it's stuck. Am I stuck? Hello guys, say something. Say something, say something. Say say like something to let me know to let me know I'm like alive and uh, stuff oh ASDF that's great hey Michael so um, I guess okay so next topic we're gonna do a uh, Python uh, so Daniel says I have a I have a uh, 120 Corsair 
$120 Corsair RGB Cherry MX keyboard and RGB was amusing for like 5 minutes so oh okay so you know I noticed that there, there is like a 10 second delay almost 5 second delay the moment I say something and the moment I see myself you know video um, yeah anyway so um so did did you guys hear when I talk about the this so anyway so let's do the the python then web crawler so this is a python uh web crawler and I'm going to I need to convert it to uh, Python 3 so first of all so so this is my blog and um, you know uh, it's like it's like 50 lines so the code is here and uh, now look at I press one key and it moves the code there but okay before I do that undo I'm going to update the date the date is the date is here. I'm going to call a command update the date. Also makes a backup. Then I press one key, and it moves the Python code to a window here. Um, okay, and uh, let's run it. It won't run because I don't have the library. Um, I don't have the library beautiful soup installed. But let's just run it anyway. Let's see, run. Yeah, no module named the beautiful soup. You know, um, you know, Python is very, fairly, you know, it's kind of annoying. So, um, so I do have. Okay, does anyone know how to install beautiful soup like quickly? I mean, um, because I used, you know, the Python, you know, installing module is very confusing. Hey Israel, that's a guy we talked about earlier. He's gonna uh, join me tomorrow and talk about culture. So, do we have do we have Python programmers? Oh, okay. Uh, so let let's um. Pip. Uh, well, um, let's see. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, um, Python virtual environment. You know, so I wrote this article like uh, in 2014, and uh, the different uh, method, you know, installation of module is very confusing. Uh, I think it's still kind of so today. So there's pip, there's easy install. As far as I know, easy install is kind of long outdated. It's a mess, you know, so uh, people don't use that. However, easy install is already installed on my Mac you know it's like default you know it's that's that's no good you know you sh Python shouldn't do that so pip let's see if I have pip installed which pip okay so I, I have pip installed so how do I install it uh, help I just type install oh be okay uh, okay let me try that then Oh God, the pip help is stuck. Okay, so finally. Uh, pip install. So Israel, you program in Python? So let's run that. Seems like Israel know what he's doing. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna run this now. If it, if it crashes my uh, operating system, <laughs> I blame you. Okay, <laughs> okay, let's do it. Do it. 
Oh, actually, I mean, uh, I should have, um, I should have installed it to my local directory. Requirement already satisfied. Beautiful soup for in. Oh, shit. So, uh, yeah, that, well, I have, you see, I have, I have it uh, installed in Python 3. Uh, let's forget about it then. Let's just, let's just try to convert this uh, into, uh, go back to my, let's just try to convert it into Python uh, 3. Okay, so wait, hold on a second. So first of all, I, I change this to Python 3, okay? What, what will happen is that um, when I move this file into a file itself, it will actually uh, name the temp file as py3, dot py3. And uh, the, and uh, you see, you see, I moved it out. And when, when the file name ends in py3, and when I run the file, it'll run, it'll use Python 3. So that's why, um, you know, that's one of the effect of, of using the class Python 3. I mean, this is, this is HTML mod, so it's just my own mod, my own design. So we are in Python, uh, let's do Python 3. So let, let's remove that. You don't need coding, okay. Let's just run it. Let's see if it works. Run. Syntax error, invalid, okay. Obviously, because print. Any print statement now needs to have parentheses. Uh, okay. Now let's run it again. Run. No module named URL lib. Oh my God. God, shit, that's going to be <laughs> no module named URL lib. And I am using it. Shit. Yeah. Uh, so what did URL lib 2 change to? Oh, God. So I don't think I can actually do this smoothly because, you know, I, f I don't, you know, because, you know, I don't code Python every day. So if you don't code it, you know, for the past month, you forgot you have, you know, every time you do something, you have to kind of like um, spend a lot of time to look into the doc and stuff. So Python 2, uh, let's see. Note URL lib2 module has been split across several modules in Python 3 named URL lib, URL request, and URL lib error. Okay, so two two three two. Okay, so so let's try to let's try the Python two two three tool. Now let me read the comments first. So Israel mostly programming PHP. Okay, uh, but have done some Python. I quit using Mac because they messed up pip and couldn't use it. Right. Hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't blame it on, on the Mac for, for this particular case, but you know, Apple is evil in many other ways, like thousands patents and intentionally make your, you know, iPhone slow whenever they have a new version. So that, you know, that's, that's actually illegal. They are being sued for it. Um, uh, in Debian, you can use pip3 for Python 3. Okay. Yeah. So Daniel says, in other words, run the command in your console, not in the Python interpreter. Um, what do you mean? They lock, they lock down sudo. Well, I mean, I think that's a good thing, actually, because you don't want to install, you know, generally, uh, you know, I agree, you know, uh, the opinion is that you don't want to install whatever Python or Perl, you know, whatever in the system, like user, user being, okay, in Unix, you know, the tradition of Unix is that, you know, when you have Unix, all the binaries are in user being or, or, or S being, okay. Now S being is kind of a system critical binary uh, programs, okay. Now user slash being is typically your Perl, your uh, uh, bash, you know, uh, 
the 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 big version of bash your you know Perl python and that that's usually in user bin now when you want to install some other software let's say golang that tradi traditionally on unix or on linux is installed in user local bin so the user local bin you still need root privilege to install things there but that directory is, is intended to be uh, you know the user installed software now this this way is actually uh, becoming out of fashion since maybe 10 years ago because you still need root you know privilege to install things here there you know user local bin so instead uh, instead many many programs these days I mean the the way to do it is that you install whatever you personally install in your personal directory you know in your home directory so that's the way the you the unix or linux evolved um you know so but in python when you use pip or you know at least when you use uh you know easy install they they still do the old way you know they install to the uh user local bin or something like that um Oh okay, yeah, and I, I know I I see what you're saying, uh, Israel. Um, okay, but anyway, so um, let's get back to Python. So let's go to my uh, my tutorial. I have a page about differences between Python two and Python three, and at the bottom I talk about how to use the program two two three that converted. Okay. And uh, we can try to use that. So let's go to eShell, which, um, hold on a second. Okay, bring, show the window. Which 223? Okay, it's there. Now let's try to run it. Uh, 223, that. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, whatever okay let's see what it did original refactored you know the another thing very annoying about Python is that Python the guide person he wants to ban you know filter and lambda you know so where if you are if your code uses you know map something uh, lambda you know to a list it, it tries to convert it to using a, a list comprehension you know, I don't want the. You know, I don't want you to tell me. You know, which way I supposed to be the better way. You know, but but Python two two three does that. I noticed. So anyway, so um. Uh, so what did it change? Uh, so it says okay. So this one is changed to this one. Good. I can accept. So uh, let me magnify. So this line is changed to this line. Okay, I can accept. And this line is changed to this line. Okay, I can accept. <laughs> the Python iter iterate items. Iter items is deprecated. No, it's just items. You know. Uh, I I despise iterators. Okay, I talked about this uh in few few last week or something. You know, few days ago. Uh, about it well actually I never actually talked about this specific issue about iterators you know the concept of iterators and generators in programming languages I hate them okay and typically they are they are they came from the OOP background object oriented programming languages it's o almost always it's the OOP languages like Java and Python has them okay in functional languages you don't have them why because it's stupid you know but why in OOP because you know because your language is lousy well to put it nicely because you know that's that's the OOP way of kind of thinking then you need iterators so called iterators and generators uh, very idiotic idea they are idiotic because they are not they are like I what what I call computer engineering side effect you know it's like mathematically as a programmer who whose job is to 
specified algorithms. The concept of iterators and generators they don't exist. They are just like int float double, you know, kind of like a reference, kind of the uh, byproduct of computer engineering. And and it's from these stupid compilers, C C plus plus programmers. They force these these uh, irrelevant ideas onto us programmers. That, that's what they are. It's controversial, of course. My opinion on this is controversial. You may not agree. But maybe next day, tomorrow, we'll, uh, I'll discuss this in depth. Um, you know, the iterators, concept, iterators, iterators, generators, they are stupid concept. In the, in the same way as the concept of int, float, long, double, <laughs> those changes every five years you know after five years oh we don't need uh, you know there's no longer double because everything is already a double you know and first of all you notice the stupidity of these names double you know double why double because because you know originally you have like one byte now you have two bytes so it's like doubled you know but but it 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 refers to a type of integer you know any anyway and and long and you know and float we're like what the fuck float what a float a boat like a banana like a banana boat you float these stupid programmers okay idiotic this is a, a moronic you know you so so this issue um so so these concepts are byproduct of computer engineering but also another issue is related to naming you see naming or jargons is critical in communication but these people stupid hacker types they always have the worst name possible one uh, and the, the one of the prime example is this uh float you know double long you know I mean, you know, look, think about it. So if you tell someone, OK, I have a type double. If he never studied programming language, does, does he? I mean, what does it mean, double? I mean, why, why, why what, what double, you know? So that, that's just, again, any, anyway, so that's another topic. So, OK, I started to rant, which is good because, um, because, because, you know, I'm doing my talk show and uh, so why you know wh what what does it make my talk show you know uh, valuable to at least some people like you guys you know because I have certain um, opinions that is not usual you know that's you know that these opinions are not what you see every day because if you I'm talking about things you already know every day while you're here right so sometimes I you know get into a rant talking about some some things that um you know i i, I feel uh, you know uh, uh the, the different ideas that i don't see you know elsewhere um so yeah so let but let me point out uh my some of my articles on these issues you 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 know um you you see I, i'm like you know doing some advertising advertisement for myself so if you look at programming um my programming blog on the side panel uh, there's a panel about jargons. Okay, let's open that. And there's a panel about semantic noodle. Open that. Now, if you go to jargons page, here's a collection of articles related to naming and jargons. You know, um, and the the semantic noodle is a collection of essays about uh, semantic related issues in programming language. And uh, the and I mentioned iterators, okay, I T E R A, okay. Here's the article, iterators, enumerator. <laughs> you know, I yeah. One thing I forgot to mention is enumerator. They they almost always exist only in OOP languages such as Java and Java, uh, Java JavaScript too today, and Python. You know, it's new in JavaScript. But anyway, so this. So on the surface, you know, you know, like I, I have this opinion and someone challenged me, you know, someone disagree and they challenge challenged me. They say uh, iterators, they are great. Ob they, I mean, they are just an abstraction, you know, programmers call abstraction because uh, abstraction, you know, so instead of dealing with indexes of a list, you know, you have iterators, which is an object. So 
in some sense it's good because it, it abstract away you know the actual indexes you know so you, you have this small um, pure thing you to work with called iterators uh, so what do I say to that I thought about it and I wrote out my reasons um, you know why uh, you know I'm trying to resolve kind of a paradox or conflict you know, like one, on one hand, I think iterator, iterator is stupid, but, but on the other hand, there's the idea of abstraction, which is in general, generally good. So it seems this, you know, so it seems I'm in conflict with myself. So I'm trying to resolve it. And, and the result of the, is this article. Basically, uh, basically, what I'm saying is that, of course, not all abstractions are good. You know, you can all, you can create abstractions for anything. Like right now, you know, like you, <laughs> you know, you can do, create abstractions for anything. So not not all of them are good, and so the iterators, uh, I think they are just wrong ones. So that's that. So let's go back to the Python three, and uh, it has changed my uh, wait. Did it? Uh, did it change? Oh, okay. It didn't change. Actually, Python two two three. What What's the? Do I need an option to say to save? Uh, I'm gonna read the comments in a, in a bit. So. Okay, let me read the comment. I, I need to run Python two two three and make it save to a file. Oh, uh, W. Okay, here. So let's do that. Write changes to file. Okay, I think that's done. Let's see. Okay, I think that's great. <laughs> it changed my file. Let's run it. Let's see if it works. Let's just run it. What? No module name beautiful soup. Wait. What? I have beautiful soup installed. What's going on? Beautiful soup four maybe. Uh, okay, let me read the comments. W, thank you, Israel. Okay, so let's see. So I need to install some system. So no pips installed by default to home. Oh, pip installed to the home directory by default. Okay, good to know. Thank you. So Daniel says lots of open source packages. Assume Python. Assume Python refers to Python two. Yeah, you know the Python. You know, like almost every decision, I I find them I disagree, because when you know they move to Python three, right? And Python three is incompatible with Python two, so it would be nice if they create a file extension. You know, py three, because otherwise, when you have dot py, it's not. I mean, it's not trivial. I, oh, it's not so easy to tell. And besides, when you run a program, for example, me, for example, I can call a command to run this program, but you cannot tell it's Python two or three. I mean, it, theoretically, it's possible if you try to pass the file. Then, you know, but but even mathematically, you know, you can have a program that's both Python two and Python three. So it's actually uh, useful. To have a different extension name, you know, dot py three, for example. But Python people, they don't want to do that. You know, they because why? Because they, you know, they 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 try, you know, Guido, you know, probably originate from this Guido guy, you know, because he wants you to think there's only one Python. You know, he he tries to like kind of force some some type of ideology onto you he want to maintain like there's only one python and all of, all of you should immediately you know switch to python 3 you know so every every decision you know everything in python is like that so i did a, a talk about python 
uh, you know, in my past few weeks ago, a week or two ago, like the whole hour is about Python, you know, a uh, guide. Uh, uh, those of you might check out. So anyway, so let's see. Um, yeah, so um, for the record, I do not agree. So Israel do not agree about the iterators. I think that's a issue. <laughs> Maybe we can debate about that. Uh, yeah. So Daniel says just call the script using something like Python 2.7. Uh, yeah, I think people watch you for the rant. Okay. <laughs> uh, iterators are a generalization. Okay, Daniel says iterators are a generalization of the iteration mechanism available. But let's take JavaScript. An iterator is an object with a dot net. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I don't think it's good, you know. Uh, actually, you know, like if we talk about this, I mean, it's because, I mean, I, you know, I, this is a controversial topic about the computer language design, you know, the issue about, you know, whether iterator is a good concept, you know, I, I, I think it's no good. Uh, so, I mean, but, but it's a, it's, it's a debatable topic. So I don't think, you know, there's absolute correct answer. I mean, even we, dis I mean, like, even we, if we discuss it, um, there are many contexts, like, what do you assume? You know, I mean, is it is it good because I mean, do you assume like industrial programming? Uh, do you assume scientific programming? Or do you assume you know uh, uh, it's more practical? You know, there's many you know uh, issues we can you know work it out. You know, we can talk when we debate. So I I'm not saying you know um, in some absolute sense. So you know, it's debatable, and 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 also. Uh, the other thing is many design uh, questions or questions in general. There's simply no one correct answer. I mean, there are different approaches, or you know, like most often people assume there's like one correct answer. You know, uh, yeah. So I'm just giving you different uh, my opinions. You know, on, on that, uh, iterators. So anyway, so let's run this, and it says, uh, "Beautiful soup is not installed." This is not correct. Let's open a new file. Let's uh, uh, set to Python mod. Let's save it as xx.py3. Uh, and let's delete everything except um, OK, let's run this. Beautiful soup is not installed, but I think it is. Uh, let's see which py3. Okay, it's in Anaconda directory. So go to the directory, go up a directory. Uh, okay, now I need to print out. Uh, the packages I have installed and I have a tutorial here on uh, how to do that list modules uh, list modules so list all available modules let's try that close 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 uh, go back run it and this is another another annoying thing please wait a moment while I gather a list of all available modules you know I've programmed in Perl in Ruby uh, in Mathematica in Emac. I've never seen I've, I've closure and uh, you know scheme list racket I've never seen a program that tells me when I want to list modules it tells me please wait it only happens in Python you know what's going on? What you know? I so I don't understand why. You, um, I Python kernel. Ah, 
it's still running god this is taking you know so does anyone know why is that when you do list modules python takes forever i mean i never had any other languages to do that Yeah, generators and iterators. Yeah, um, yeah, interesting. Um, so, does anyone know why Python modules always like take a long time to list? And I got a bunch of <laughs> shit. Oh my god! I just installed the Anaconda thing, and uh, I ran it last time. I don't remember. It's you know, all this. Okay, I don't, I don't, I try to search beautiful soup, it's not there, but okay, so I don't think it's there. Reading module documentation, list modules, function, variable names, using module, using module, import function names, form module, default module, module search path. Let's do that. I want to print the module search path. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, so soup. There it is, beautiful soup. Uh, soup. So why why is it? Um, Okay, so beautiful soup is not um, there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not. Um, A E O S A. I don't know what is that. Side packages, leap, dynamic load. Okay, soup. Beautiful. Okay, it's not there. Okay, so the problem I think is with beautiful soup. I thought it's already installed. Uh, okay, I guess I. Uh, browser bug. Uh, so, any suggestions on what to do? The problem is the problem is uh, module not found error no module named beautiful soup. Okay, and uh, so far we have found uh, these are my load path for modules and. Uh, Let's try to print the modules again, see what they are. Ah, this is gonna take a long time again. Um, okay, that that's, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, Wait, this is this is strange because I just inst installed Anaconda three, and that the whole thing is like two gigabytes, 
is supposed to have everything included. I'm pretty sure uh, beautiful soup is part of it on a contra. You know, it's got two giga, you know, two point five gigabytes. So why, uh, why, why not? Uh, it's not there. Beautiful soup four. Okay, they they changed the name. Is that true? Uh, let's look at uh, now the Python module name. Is there a convention for capitalization? Uh, let's just try that. Okay, let's copy that, paste it there. Save that. Then let's run this. Let's just try different things. No, <laughs> this is this is trial and error coding. Uh, Nah, this is no good. Oh, okay. Thank you, Israel. <laughs> Read the fucking manual. <laughs> you know, okay, I'm gonna rant again, you know. Uh, come, come. You know, I'm gonna rant again. You know, the Python, Python has this syntax, okay, from something, import something. Where from, let me, let me just run it. Uh, let, let's see if that works. Let me just run it, hold on. Okay, thank you, Israel, it works. I'm gonna rant about this syntax from something, import something, okay. Yeah, let's, let's do that. I'm gonna rant, you know, it's rant. So, you see, Python has, uh, let me just explain. So Python has this syntax, uh, this, um, uh, for example, compare, compare uh, from, let's say, ff uh, uh, lib, okay, uh, let's say x, y, z, versus uh, Python mod, okay, versus uh, import, okay. Let's say these two statements, you know, when you import the x, y, z, uh, let's just say x, okay? When you import x, this this part is uh, the variable, the, the, the library's name, okay? Now, when you have this syntax, f something from, uh, from something, import something, this variable, uh, wait, wait, well, oh, I got confused. Um, yeah, so, so when you have this syntax from something, uh, let me write it this way. I think that that's that. From something, import something. The import something has different semantics than the import something there. You see what I mean? So 
that means when given a piece of syntax like a piece of string like this one uh, like the first line depending on where you put it depending on the adjacent uh, string the meaning changed you know that's what I call uh, context dependent semantics I don't you know I, I, I don't think it's a good thing it's a bad thing so I I, I try to avoid so that's one of the rent uh, rant related to this uh, issue but anyway this worked uh, thank you um, Israel uh, so let's get back to uh, let's get going with the um, let's get going with the uh, um, this um, But also, you know, since this works in, I mean, why, why, why should we do the, um, any, anyway, let's do it. Let's run it. It's working. <laughs> Finally, it's working. <laughs> so that concludes, you know, the, 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 the main thing I'm doing today. I mean, the, you know, one of the topics. So finally it works. But why is it so slow? It's finished. Oh, it looks like now GitHub started to um, uh, it stops you from calling now the, uh, GitHub because I don't remember I have put a uh, stop to this. Let's try it again. So. I think GitHub um, process one URL. Well, true. Uh, yeah, I think GitHub maybe uh, try to prevent people from calling now. Uh, where is my? <laughs> Caller. Okay, here. So now let's put the code back. Show in browser. Okay, back to Emacs. Syntax color it. Show in browser. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it for this. But uh, offline, I'm going to work out some of the details, like you know, refactor, clean up the code, uh, and make it you know make it cool. Like it used to you know send you know return a bunch of links you know it's that's what crawler does but i think maybe github you know figure out maybe uh, to see if maybe github did something to prevent crawling so that that's it for the you know two two three conversion uh use gitlab not github yeah well the i mean that's the open source you know issue right i mean yeah if you are a big fan of open source, you want to use GitLab, but but GitHub, yeah, that's that's a, an entire new topic. But well, well, the the thing is, it's just not practical. You know, a lot of things are GitHub. You know, now you see. So I mean, if I take your suggestion, then I'm going to spend few hours. I mean, literally, it's gonna be like almost a whole day to put my stuff to GitLab. Then I have to tell all the people how I, you know, it's going to take like a full time one day, more than one day. I'm going to update all my Emacs repository. Then I have to tell friends, you know, things change. Then people is going to ask me, you know, because I used to, where is your link? You know, I have to talk about it. Then the thing is, then the next year, GitLab is, you know, bought by Microsoft. <laughs> you know it happens all the time because when there's money if you are the author of GitLab tomorrow Microsoft says hey we're gonna give you 10 millions you know you're gonna do it you know because you know that's your food you know then then GitLab becomes you know something else then all you know, the, the cycle happens all over again you know this happens in the past you know 30 years um, yeah, but you know, I, I actually I don't use GitHub much. I mean, I don't use all the tools and details. I only just you know, uh, you know, use it very simply. So I hope that um, okay, that's it. So, 
so um, the person Nicholas. <laughs> so uh, I hope that's fun to watch to see. Is it good? Are you still here, Nicholas? So maybe that's it for today. Um, yeah, we've been talking over. So uh, Israel again. I shall see you tomorrow. And let me. I'm going to try uh, the software like um, in an hour. I'm going to try the software you suggested, and hopefully tomorrow I'll have you uh, on the show. You know, we talk about uh, a little bit culture around where you live, something like that, probably. Um, yeah. And I'll see you uh, guys tomorrow. I think maybe I'll, I'll go have a pizza. Okay, yeah, we, we'll work it out, um, Israel. So, thank you guys for coming. Uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.